Hey there, I'm Robin Marie Smith, and I just want to welcome you to this video of the 100 day project where I'm making tea bag papers. And in this first part of the video, I'm going to walk through and show you days 21 through 30 and answer some questions that I've been asked about the project and about my pieces. And then in the second half of the video, I'm going to take one of those um, art papers and I'm going to create a mail art pouch. So I'm gonna walk you step by step on how I'm gonna do that. I get asked a lot, well, what are you gonna do with these papers? And so this is an example of taking one of the papers from the series and turning it into something else. So I hope that you will enjoy it, that you will be inspired, and just let me know if you have any questions. All right, thanks, enjoy. Hey there, in this video, we're gonna take a look at days 21 through 30 of the 100 Day Project. If you've been keeping up with the project, you know that I am incorporating clean dried tea bags into collage papers in some form or another. I'm just creating a lot of random papers that I hope to uh, include in collage or in my journal, mail art. I like to just have these papers so that I can then use them in many projects. So this is day 21. So this one started out as an eco dyed paper as well. And I have, you can see this tea bag here. This was a square tea bag. I love that it still has a little bit of the rough edge on the ends of it. And then there's another one here. You can see the string right here. And then I have another piece over here. So it just varied. Sometimes I added one, maybe a piece of a tea bag, and then I kept adding and adding more. So this one has some coffee on it. There's pastels, there's watercolor, um, and then there's also gesso, white gesso. All right, this one is a favorite. This is day 22. It's very, this one's really thin. Uh, this was a regular old copy paper that I eco dyed as well. And you can see how wrinkled it is. And this happened in the dyeing process because it got wet. And I really liked this one. Um, this one, I did not use gesso on it. So it took the watercolor quite differently than some of the other papers. It really sunk into and absorbed into the paper. And so I added a lot of pinks and I did the black charcoal or uh, black pastel. And then here's the tea bag area right in here. So this is definitely a favorite. I love this one. All right, this one is day 23. And this one is from Flow Magazine. And I just covered it with gesso and added in the collage bits. There's a lot of black in this one. I kind of kept it toned down. Um, if I remember correctly, this one is the one I kind of worked on that was, we were really kind of in the middle of the pandemic and the lockdown and I don't know I was just kind of feeling dark I guess and so it's a little darker than a lot of my other work but there's coffee there's um, the tea bags here and here you can see a lot of the strings um, I don't know what I'll do with this one if I'll keep it as it is or if I'll end up you know taking parts of it and use it in some other project but I still like this one even though it's a little bit dark and then this one it's like I just suddenly got this bump <laughs> this is day 24. This is also, um, I think this is newsprint, which is a thin paper. Um, there's a light coat of gesso on this. And then I added in um, the tea bag there. And I did, for this one, I was working with just a lot of pink circles. And then I added in some gesso and some layers just to kind of tone down some of these and make them not all look so perfect. So I definitely like that one as well. And that was day 24. This is day 25. And day 25 started out, this was a piece of newsprint. It was under paper, the paper I lay down on my work surface that I can then use later. I clean brushes on it, I scribble. You can see the start of kind of one here. And the tea bag is a little bit hard to see on this one, but it's right in, it's right in here. And this one I think was one of the bigger ones, yeah. And there's actually a little piece right up here, so. All right, this is day 26. Now this one started out as an old postcard. And it's in a different language. I don't know what language this one is in, um, but this is day 26. So I covered the uh, photo side of the postcard so I could keep this. And I added the tea bag, which is one of the big ones here. And then I just added some ledger paper and some more coffee, um, some pastels to finish that one off. Okay, this one's day 27. Again, this one has uh, some pastels, watercolor, pretty much the same supplies that I'm using for all. And then the tea bags are right in this area here. 
Okay, and this one is day 28. Kind of went smaller on this one and used a little bit more orange and some coffee on this one. Not one of my favorites, but you know what? They're not all going to be a favorite, right? And day 29. And this one was also from Eco Dyed Paper. And you can see the edges are kind of worn. It actually tore. And this is um, a piece of graph paper that I eco dyed and it was really fragile. So, cause the graph paper is super, super thin. And then here's a tea bag, the tea bags there. And then I did a little bit of ledger paper and some doodles and the watercolor didn't take as well on this because it was so thin. And I did not put gesso on this one when I started. I like to kind of experiment and see what each one will do. That's why I like to use so many different papers. Um, this one is construction paper. You can see I tore this one. So I had to put some masking tape on the back. I love the imperfections. And then this one, I used the blues and I did a little bit of doodling, more, more sketching on this one. You can see little bits of tea bags in various places on this one. So this one is day 30. Okay, so that is day 21 through 30. Um, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at those. And if you have any questions on my process or any of the supplies that I use, just let me know. Um, I do at times need to use a fixative or seal um, depending on how the pastels work. Most of the time I'm mixing with so much water and other mediums that it really doesn't uh, rub off. But if it does, and I feel like I need to, I'll use a fixative. I use a pastel fixative um, by Senelay, and it seems to work pretty good. You can also use inexpensive hairspray, give it a nice uh, coat and let it dry and you'll be all set. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, bye-bye. Hey there, in this part of the video, I would like to show you what I might do with one of these uh, paper collages uh, from the 100 Day Project and uh, give you an idea of what you could do with some of your um, fun painted papers as well. I think for this one, uh, these are days uh, 21 through 30, I think I wanna try maybe doing some mail art. Um, I have some things I wanna send you a friend and I like sending things where they look pretty. So I'm just kind of going through my pieces and I'm, I kind of want something bigger, so I might end up using this one. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it earlier when we went through them. I had mentioned that this was a little dark and, but I think it might be um, suitable to uh, use for my mail art piece. So I have my paper and then I have a piece of watercolor paper. Um, it's cut the same size, I just tore it. So I think I'm gonna use this. And in an effort to sort of tie the coloring into this, um, I'm gonna use some watercolor and I think some pastels and just do a little coat on this. Nothing uh, too elaborate, I just wanna give it some color. So let's start with, I'm gonna start with this. This is the black Senelay pastel. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that and my water I'm going to add some water. Now this doesn't have gesso on it, so it will likely take the water differently, which it generally does. Um, the gesso allows the coloring to kind of sit on the top of the paper, which I really like. And I'm going to use this as a Diane Townsend soft pastel in this really, really hot pink, which is really pretty. So let's do a little bit of that. And then I'm going with maybe some pencil. And let's do some coffee as well, because that was used in this, and I'll probably put a tea bag or two on here. So let's find a couple spots here and we'll do a little bit of coffee. I'm just spraying this with a water from a water bottle. And it's buckling a little bit, so I'm just gonna sit this little bowl. This has got some white gesso in it. All right, and then I I'm pretty sure I'm gonna add some tea bag to it. Um, I say I don't want to do too much on it, but that often ends up changing, but <laughs> I'm gonna try not to. So let's see what else I've got. I've got some more of this deli paper that has been painted with some white. So I've got that. I was just looking at some of these scrap papers I have here. Maybe something like that. I don't know. 
This is a Stabilo Tone pencil. They don't make this particular one anymore. Um, it's by Stabilo. You can get what are called woodies. It may work much the same way. And I did use that on this one. I'm pretty sure that is what I used. And I mixed in watercolor and pastel. So I wanted to add that in because that's the color it looks like that I used. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just kind of going in and I want to make it look similar to the piece that I'm going to use from the 100 Eye Project. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this white gesso and then just drop in a little bit of white here and there in some of these spots that are still damp. And here is a charcoal pencil. I'm just gonna go in and do a little scribbling with that. Okay, I think that's gonna work just fine because I don't wanna do too much. And I think that all I'm gonna do is just add in, I think a tea bag onto this. Hmm. All right, so there is the back page for my, or the, the back piece for my mailing art or mail art. I'm gonna make an envelope. So what I'm going to do is decide, it doesn't really matter, I guess, which is the top or bottom. So this is going to be my envelope, and I'm going to put all my goodies inside. Now, I have this tape. It is a shipping tape. It's, it's a craft color. It's gummed, meaning it has adhesive on it, and it's extremely strong. It's got fibers that run through it. So I'm going to use this to uh, seal up my envelope. So I've cut two pieces here and I'm gonna just, I folded it in half. I'm just gonna add some water to activate the sticky part of it. And then I'm gonna just start on one side, doesn't really matter which one. And place this down. It's extremely sticky, so. Once it's down, it's down. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one. Kind of like it because it plays off the, the colors nicely. Okay, and you can see it does really kind of go with it. Oh, I didn't do that one very straight, but that's all right. All right, and so this one, I'm gonna show you, because I'm gonna have to cut this one. I'll just cut, instead of going and getting a, a long one, I'm just gonna cut this one and then just fold it. So, okay, so there we go. And let's fold this one. I don't know, I won't need both of them. One's a little longer than the other, but. All right, once again, just put the water on it. Again, it's extremely sticky, so just letting you know. I don't really like that that one's gonna cover up some of that tea bag. So maybe, see if I can get it in there. Yeah, that's okay. All right, not perfect, but it works. And then this one. I didn't quite go all the way to the end on that, but that's all right. There we go. And then I'm just gonna trim the uh, overage off. And now we have the tape on both sides. So now we have this pocket to put our mail art in, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is just go in and add some white paint, or white gesso, sorry, to 
the tape. And I'll do it on both sides. All right, that looks good. All right, so there is our super fast quick envelope. You could even just leave the back white if you wanted. Um, you could glue text paper on it if you wanted. And if you wanna take the time to do it to where it kind of matches, then absolutely do that. And then we'll put the papers inside of it. So I'm just gonna sit this over here to kind of dry those edges. And then I have an assortment of papers from my stash that I wanna share with my friend. Okay, so I just have an assortment of papers. This was made in my Easy Bake Artisan Paper class where we used for, uh, vegetables and plants to dye paper, bake it in the oven. Um, here's some strips of watercolor papers I painted. I think those will fit. Here's just a piece of collage paper. Already got one of those in there. I think these will all fit, so yeah. So I'm just gathering up an assortment of papers that I wanna share. All different sizes. This has been stained with coffee, so I'm gonna put that in there too. Just, here's a eco dyed paper. Um, this one was done uh, in a, with a boil with different uh, leaves and flowers. This one too. Colors are very different, but they look pretty cool. And then some more eco dyed paper. Um, I'm sorry, these are the Easy Bake Artisan papers that were used. I think this was. Um, the purple there is, I think, cabbage. This one was avocado. Makes a beautiful pink, beautiful pink. And then here's another sheet of that watercolor paper. I think I'll do a half a sheet of that. Okay, I just wanna make sure they all fit. So I'm just gonna stack them up into a little bundle. And then these will go inside the envelope. And I might put a few more, and then here's some tea bags. I'll put these in here too. And then of course I'll write a little note and I'll put that in there as well. And so then these get tucked in here. And I do like to usually, on a piece of paper that I've made, an artsy paper, I'll put a little note on the other side. You can use a tag as well. All right, so that's drying right now. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I have this glassine envelope. I'm going to put my mail art into the glassine envelope and then on the outside I will put the mailing address and the label. So some of the art will show through and it will look really pretty and then um, the other the label will go on here. That way it saves this and so I know that my art friend she is going to reuse this. She'll probably cut the ends off and then she can reuse the paper that it's in as well as all the goodies on the inside. So I'm gonna let these edges dry and then I'm gonna write a little note and put that in here for her and then we'll show you how we'll finish this up. My note has been included, so I'm ready to seal this up. I'm not gonna close this part of the envelope. So I'm gonna put this in and what I want is, I want the flap side to have the mailing label on it and I want this side to be where the label is so that the really pretty side shows out. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. I flatten it out and so now I'll seal it on this side and then this side will show through the envelope. You can do either way, all right? And then I'm going to seal it with a piece of the same tape that I used to create the envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water to this so that I can activate the adhesive, the stickiness. And again, it is really sticky. So once you place it down, you wanna make sure it is in the correct position. Get some bubbles out of it. Okay, I like that. I like the way it crunches. 
And then I was thinking um, I could definitely put some gesso on it. I almost was thinking it'd be kind of fun to put some tea bags on it. I haven't decided, but I'm going to go ahead and add the white gesso though, because that kind of finishes it off. Maybe even add in some pencil marks if I want. And just get creative with it. Actually, that might be kind of pretty, huh? I mean, it's gesso after all, so you can use the pastels on it. Actually, I should have let that dry first, but that's okay, because it'll kind of mix and turn gray, but that's all right. You get the idea. And let's see, let's use the regular pencil. And let's use this to add in some color. And maybe that's all I'll do. I'll just keep it simple, right? Add a little water. And then we'll let that dry. And then now everything coordinates and matches. Yeah, I like that idea. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions at all. And thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.